In this case, I've separated nano usage in two different tables. The left one is for 3.3 and higher, and the right one is for, for under 3.3. The reason why this is so confusing is the fact that initially when I started doing the table, the left I only had in mind the left one for 3.3 and higher, but then I thought, wait, some of these will not apply in bronze games. So, this is why it's confusing. Before we start, if you hover over them, you see a lot of notes. Before we start, this table is strictly my opinion on aggressive non-usage and it comes from my experience from ranked, watching games and doing a lot of vote reviews, alongside with the ranked to GM challenges. This should only be used as a guideline if you're a new player, slash if you're a new Ana player, if you're or if you're stuck at a certain rating and want to learn more about the hero. Hope it is useful. Now, before I read the important notes that's gonna be after the table is done, I'm gonna read what yellow means. Because you see there's a lot of yellow on the left. The yellow one. The maybe section is dedicated to the following scenarios. One, has cooldowns to engage. Second, needs nano to farm ult faster. For example, your Xenyat is at 70% ult, they have nano rate up and you need to build trans fast. If you see an opportunity for your Xen to get some hits in with nano, do it as he will build ult faster. So you have a good counter for nano blade. Three, they have the space slash range needed to do something. And I go in, in examples. Important note, maybe nanos are highly dependent on your own experience in combination with your teammates ability to do something with it. This is why you see a lot of yellow onto the left, which is the higher SR, and a lot of red instead of yellow over here onto the right, which is the lower SR. Because you can nano a widow in top 500 when she's behind the enemy team, if there is nobody that can contest her, but if you do this in bronze, nothing will stop. Nothing will happen. And you see, I will stop screaming now and start meowing meow. Anyway, now let's analyze the table. I'm first gonna start on the right side, at, as this is the lowest star one, and this is gonna apply to the majority of you. So red is no-no. Let's go nice and easy. If I need to explain, I'm gonna explain. But most of them are easy to understand. Um, first, D.Va. No, there is no reason for you to nano diva that has ultimate. She's not going to do anything with it. There is no reason to nano diva without ultimate, apart from the fact that maybe she has cooldowns if you climb higher in a sag. But usually in lower sags, nothing's going to happen if you nano a diva. Orisa, I put as maybe on lower sag because Orisas can get scared of walking forward, and if you nano them, you might give them the incentive to do so. Reinhardt is a good nano target anytime, as long as they're in range. To do something with the hammer. Nano Hog in bronze and silver just obliterates the enemies the enemies as they do not know how to counter them, how to counter the whole hog. But without ultimate, your hog is probably gonna go uh, into their backyard and feed his ass is his ass off, or he's gonna miss every shot possible. I would put this with yellow, but mostly don't nano him if he doesn't have ult. Sigma, let's be honest. I in my I can't understand how uh, players in gold play Sigma, so this is why I put as a no nano target. If you nano a Sigma, you're not gonna increase the percentage of the ult damage that he does, you're just gonna increase the 50 dash 50 slam damage from 50 to 75. So, yeah, Winston, good nano target, but make sure he has jump before he before you nano him, okay. And one thing, it's not that good to nano Winston while he's using his ultimate, but it is very good to nano him if he has his ultimate. The reason behind this is that he can go even deeper into the enemy lines with his nano because he knows that if he gets hard focused by the enemy, he can just use his primal rage. So with what I mean with ult, I don't mean while he's using ult. I mean he has his ult up and he's about to engage and use it a bit later on. Okay. <clears throat> Ball. Nano before he slams. Ball is a good nano target. He does 100 damage plus nano. He's also tanky, so nano before he slams. Wait, what if I do? Zarya, all that matters is that she has a lot of energy. She's a good nano target and they're in range. Ash, low rating, no, she's useless. Bastion with ult, yes, good nano target. Without ult, not that good. You can, but not that good. Doomfist in lower sags, good if he has his cooldowns, you see him charge the punch, it's good. Echo with ultimate, if you trust with Echo and nano her after she uses her ultimate, otherwise the nano will affect the, the nano effect will not pass onto the clone. Without ultimate, not that good of a nano target in lower stacks, my opinion. Genji, nano him only when he has blade. If he doesn't have blade and he has 70%, he'll probably feed his ass off. As 
want to oppose to the left. I give an explanation. I know there's a problem with the comments. We're going to solve it after. Let me finish the whole uh, the whole spreadsheet explaining it. And then I'm going to give you full access probably to view comments as well. For example, like over here in lower SR, if Genji has 80% ult, you probably don't want to nano him. If he dashes to five people, then you might want to nano him. Hanzo, big no-no. He doesn't do anything with his ult. He doesn't do anything without the ult. Junkrat, big no-no. McCree, yes. The reason behind it is... In high ratings, when Mekri casts ultimate, they hide. In low SRs, when Mekri casts ultimate, they can't hide. They don't have enough time to react. So this is, in my opinion, why Mekri's ultimate will probably work better in low SRs if you nano him. You don't nano him to increase the damage. You nano him to increase the to increase decrease the amount of time that uh, the dead eye needs to lock onto people. Um, if the enemy shield are and if the enemy shields are broken slash about to break or the enemy is playing dive and the fight is starting, it's good to nano Mekri. May is good to nano. Fara good to nano. Maybe good to nano if it's a good angle for a barrage. Without ult, I don't trust the silver Fara. Reaper good. Why? And this is the reason. Because if you're in silver, your Reaper is really close to the enemy. He will just destroy us. The game is not that great and they will not keep cooldowns to cancel him out. And this is where you're going you're gonna to get the click in your head. For example, Sigma will probably not save kine ki Kinetic. Kinetic grasp the suck or rock for him. Or Diorisa will not know how to use Fortify or try to pull him away. Additionally, it is very easy to aim with Reaper as you're literally in front of them. So I think you'll get great results with nanoing him. Soldier good for the nano visor. Partially good if there aren't any shields. Sombra, I don't think it's good to nano her. I know she does a lot of damage and shoots at people, but I don't think in gold people are gonna understand how to play with Sombra if she if they she gets nano. Symmetra is really good nano target in low SRs. I think she's very good because she's just gonna mouse one into them and you're not gonna focus her down. Tracer, good nano target overall in any situation, in my opinion. Tracer is a good nano target. Tracer is as reliable as ball, as long as they have slam. It's uh, they, Tracer has one dash or two, and Ball has slam. They equally do the same amount of things. Widowmaker, no. Bop, no. Brig, compared to left, as we're gonna see, Brig, in my opinion, is a raid boss. If your Brig is close to the enemy and your team is grouped up, as in you and Brig aren't the only ones that are about to engage, nanoing her will feel like killing a raid boss for the enemy. Who the fuck focuses Brig in silver? They won't save the nade, they won't disengage, they'll just try to focus her down, if they will, and she will eventually kill everybody for Gite. Literally. Nano Break is strong, is really strong. Lucio, no. Mercy, no. Moira, if she does an aggressive coalescence. What I mean by this is she uses call to do damage, not when your team is low. She uses coalescence to do damage. Then maybe Nano Moira is good. Maybe. When she doesn't have ult, no. When she does, when Zen doesn't have, uh, when Zen doesn't. Zen doesn't matter, not a good nano target in low SRs, because even if he nano Zen in silver, he's, he probably doesn't even know to keep transfer nano blade, you know? Anyway, before we hop to the left table, this was the right table, and this is gonna be posted on YouTube. So hello YouTube, in case you're wondering why, uh, yeah, what we're doing here. Before, before I hop onto the left side, important notes to take, of, take into consideration. First, this type of usage, this whole spreadsheet is for aggressive nanos when you want your team to be the initiator or you want to add extra damage to the team fight you can always nano anyone in your team to save them from death so that your team can re-engage after for example your mercy is taking a lot of damage and you have to reload and have no need you can use the nano to save her important note too this applies mostly to the right side table if your tanks don't engage you can do a validation nano on them example orisa which means you just throw the nano in your Orisa that has been staying AFK at the choke point on first point Halamora on attack for two minutes as a way to tell her that it's okay to press W because she is safe with you. In lower ratings, you will probably be forced to do a lot of validation nanos for your team to go aggressive. Remember, using Ana's ultimate doesn't automatically result in kills or you saving your team or other similar things. It can also be used to create space and using the scenario I described, it does exactly that. So, remember that in Plat slash Diamond, in Plat or Low Diamond, in the Anon rank to GM series, I did a lot of nanos that didn't seem any, didn't seem like it would do anything, right? <clears throat> but it, they, they created space. Anyway, um, important note 3. When you nano somebody, make sure the enemy is in the effective range of your teammate. For example, you nano Zarya. 
If you're not know a guy and the enemy is playing dive and they're not engaging, that's a waste. But if you're not know a guy and when he's hammering another guy, hammering, catchy base, that's a good nano. Also, just because we are talking about Reinhardt, small tip, if you have a Lucio in your team, try to ask your Lucio to speed boost your Rein in after you nano him, so he can smack more people. Now let's check out the left table, so a right table is for players that are under diamond or mid diamond, right? But it can suffer modifications. My opinion, just check the green and the red outlines, and just try to memorize them. Left one is for high ranked players, diamond and above. You see that the table is more yellow, maybe because it depends on the player. Diva with ultimate, you don't know Diva when he bomb, when she bombs, there's no reason. Without ultimate, maybe, maybe she punishes somebody that's out of position. Orisa, same reason as here. Reinhardt, good, Roadhog, okay, with the exception that Roadhogs in high ratings know what to do with the nano even if they don't hold hog, they know how aggressive to go, they're not gonna feed that hog, and if they start taking damage, they will fall back. Sigma, good to nano to farm the ultimate, if he's like 70 or 80% ult, good target to nano to farm his ult fast as I explained in the important notes, or over here in the maybe section. And with ultimate, he can kill squishies. That 75 extra damage, apart from the 50%, is good. It's good in my opinion. He lifts people up when he slams the 75 and he can also uh, do one or two attacks in the world. The nano can work out. Not optimal, but can work out. Winston, same note as before. Very good to nano him. Make sure he has leap. Try not to nano him when he's using his ultimate. But if he has his ultimate, it's a good nano target because he can go deeper knowing that if he gets focused, even with nano, he can always use primal to get out. If he, if you nano Winston and primal, it's not that good. Ball, same reason, good as long as he has slam and be, nano before he slams. Zarya, same thing. All that matters is that she has a lot of energy. It doesn't matter if she has ultimate or not. It matters that she's above 50 energy and you can tell that by how uh, bright she's glowing. Ash, nano, a nano effect... Nano effect still applies to Boba as, to Boba as well. It will get fixed soon, but until then you can you can abuse it. My opinion, you can abuse it quite easily. Also, without ult, as if she in high ranks, usually Ash is going to flank big TNT onto five people, and yeah, Bastion with ult, same thing as here, good and yellow because Bastions even if they go in Sentry in Masters, they have way better aim than Silver Bastions. They're not gonna stand still. They they turn into a mini Soldier 76, a better Soldier 76, so it's like the same as here. So if you now know a Bastion in Masters, he's gonna start running and pew pew at everybody in sentry form if nobody's walking in front, while if you now know a Bastion in Bronze, he's just gonna stand still in target form and gonna waste your nano. Doomfist, nano when he has cooldowns, good nano. Echo, nano after she uses ultimate, otherwise the nano will not pass, the nano effect will not pass onto the clone, but you can also nano her before she uses ultimate or if she doesn't have ultimate, but make sure she has cooldowns. Genji, nano blade, and obviously, if he has 80% and can dash to two or three people or he asks you to nano because he's close to blade, nano him. Hanzo with ult doesn't matter, chunk head while ulting doesn't matter, may with ult doesn't matter, but you can nano them if they want to go aggressive. For example, if your junk head is behind them, and he has insane damage and the tanks are alive, he can do a lot of damage to the tanks with the nano and then he can double mine himself out or he can double mine himself in and turn into a kamikaze into them, right? So yeah, make the same reasoning over here. I put it as yellow instead of green because people usually take cover faster over here. You need to be quite fast with the nano when to use it more, unexpected, expect, more unexpectedly, you know, compared to over here. Here you can be a bit late with the nano, the challenge is still gonna happen, they're not gonna take cover. Here you need to be instant with the cast guide before they take the second Mickey high nose, you need to nano instantly. Here you have a little bit of uh, a, a more, more space to work with. Same, if there aren't any shields, then good nano target. Make good nano target without ultimate as she becomes even tankier when she walks in front and she has shift. If she's close to ult, a good nano target in my opinion, if she just was and walks into five people. Because she, she, why? Because you force her freeze later. You force her shift later and she's gonna get her ult faster. Farah, if she has cooldowns or if she asks, she can engage hard with her E, which is probably more prone to... It's, higher, it's a higher possibility that it's gonna happen in diamond and higher rather than underneath, rather than in a lower stacks, I mean. Uh, so she, she's gonna go and do some rockets, nano is good, nano reaper is good. Yellow for reaper as they can disengage 
uh, with if he doesn't have his ultimate because in higher ratings they keep suck they keep fortify they keep pull they keep bubbles they speed boost out this is why reaper in my opinion without ultimate doesn't work and even with tult that shouldn't work that good actually i'm gonna put reaper with yellow how many reaper ultimates you see in top 500 games but in diamond slash master it can work out but usually you keep cooldowns but in lower stars they don't keep cooldowns sombra a soldier with nano visor yes without any shields okay sombra why because sombra after she mps in higher stars if she doesn't have translocator she can do a lot of damage if she has good aim. If you don't know Sombra, somebody that's playing Sombra and Silver, she's just gonna die, in my opinion. And she's not gonna do that much with the Nano. You cannot know Sombra if she's close to EMP or after she EMPs. So, yeah, of course, Nano her after she uncloaks, don't Nano her before she EMPs, because it's just gonna give, give her position away. Symmetra, same reasoning. Symmetra is really oppressive. Good Nano target. Torbjorn, good Nano target, in my opinion. Over here, over here, if you don't know Torbjorn, I don't know what you're gonna do. Torbjorns, from my experience, in Silver are just gonna stay behind the turret and just fix the turret like it's the old Torbjorn. Torbjorns in high SR are scary as fuck, and they're just gonna walk in you and right click on you, and they're just gonna roll through you. So, this is why he's more high priority than in low SRs. Tracer, good nano target overall. Widowmaker, mm, I would put with yellow, depends on the player, but we're already talking about top 10, top 100 games. Baptiste, bad nano target when he has his ultimate. Why? Because you're probably better off not even nanoing when the bop window is available. That's why. And second, good nano target if he doesn't have ultimate. As we've seen in the game in the rank to gem with Tana on Temple, the game that the last game before we got to Masters, the game that got us to Masters, a nano bop can do a lot of damage. And yeah. So yeah. Brig, it's still good, but the enemy can disengage. Compared to over here where the enemy doesn't know what disengage even means. Disengage, I mean they start running away. Engage, you go in them. Nano Lucio, no. I'm sorry, Reddit Lucius, but Nano Lucio, no. Mercy, no. Moira with Coalescence, same reasoning. If they can't disengage and they go low, or uh, she doesn't need to heal, then it's a good nano target. Without this, red, as in it's not a good nano target. Zenyatta with trans, useless. Without trans, Zen's balls hit hard, but his nano balls hit harder. Right? So, yeah. This is the table. I hope you learned a thing from two from it. My opinion on how you should study it. You should know the red outlines and never do them or rarely do them. And you should know the green outlines. You'll probably use this table more. Again, right is for under 3.3, left is for higher than 3.3. And keep note of the notes that I've explained at the beginning of the game. The document will be available for everybody. So make sure to read the description for to check the description for it. And I hope you learned a thing or two on how to use Nano Boost aggressively. Okay, not defensively.